I ate so much good Denny's, so full. Yo, welcome back to Containing Luxury. On this episode, we're gonna be discussing the install of our electrical system on our container home. Let's get started. Yeah, what? What are you doing? So as always, you know, we always recommend when doing anything that's potentially lethal that you would go with your electrical contractor. For all of our exterior stuff, we actually had our electrical contractor come out here and go ahead and install our panel for us, connect our uh, AC system into the panel. We wired up a 50 amp RV plug. So our containers are designed to be able to go to virtually any RV park and plug in both water, sewer, or all of them, water, sewer, and electric, exactly as any RV. So we have our 50, uh, 50, oh, there's ants in there. Uh, we have a 50 amp RV plug mounted here. That's gonna be our power inlet connected to a 50 amp main breaker inside of our panel. We went ahead and added a 20 amp GFI receptacle so that if we shut off everything inside the panel, we would still have power here for something if we wanted to, to do some modifications or we needed it uh, just for whatever, working outside. Since our AC system is within a couple of feet of our electrical panel, we actually didn't need to put a disconnect here because we can shut it off right here in the panel and then boom, we can work on our AC if we have any AC issues. But all this was done by a good friend of ours. Um, you know, we're a general contractor, so we had him come out and put in this whole system, which was ran nice and neat, everything sealed, turned out fantastic. So let's jump onto the inside and we'll kind of show you a lot of the stuff that we did ourselves. On the inside, the electrical was not so easy. We kind of went over how those electrical raceways are built into the InsoFast system. It was kind of a pain getting the wire into the locations that we needed. And, you know, we, tr we tried screwing some of the boxes to the foam. This one actually did hold, but we had to cut out so much foam to be able to bend the Romax back. So we found when we gave ourselves more room, the box would actually stay in place because we had more air, you know, more room to be able to bend the Romax and not have it be pushing the box out of the wall. But then we had to put this much foam around it, which was not fantastic. I wanted to keep as much of this intact as possible. But that was one of the later boxes we did. It did stay a little bit better. Um, but all these are locations where we got stuck with our wire. You know, we came down the wall here and then we had to turn and come over here but uh, we actually fished it across. We were able to get from here to here without too much trouble, but getting from here to here, we couldn't make it. So we actually ended up having to cut a hole here and, and grab the wire and pull it through and then fish it back up through there. So that was just some of the, some of the issues we were having. But when you do cut these, these holes where you need to, you, if you shave down the foam a little bit, they actually go back in nice. And what I did was I spray foamed the hole and then put the same chunk right back in and pushed it in tight. And then as this came off, I used InsoFast shank. So this is honestly like the best tool ever if you're doing InsoFast. So it's just a long metal Sawzall blade and I electrical taped it to make a handle. But I took this and I would lay it flat so it bends a little bit and I'll go like this across the whole thing and cut it off nice and smooth. So like this is sticking out a little bit. I can take this and just real lightly and cut it nice and flat. So all these little places, nice and smooth. So this was a good tool that really helped that process, but you can tell, um, you know, some of these boxes, we could not get them to grab, especially when we had a lot of wire in one location. Now all of our electricity is off, so I'm able to grab some of these, but when we mounted these boxes, all those wires were trying to push the boxes out. So usually when we do our framing, we mount that box and we screw it directly to the framing. So it can't really go anywhere. In this case, we didn't have that luxury because foam is really the only thing holding the box to the foam. So we had to rig some stuff and kind of like, weighted against it while the foam dried. So that was one issue we had. Um, you know, if you had some leeway on where you wanted to put your outlets or needed to put your outlets and you could mount directly to a stud with one of these types of boxes, that would be definitely your best situation. But being that these studs are 22 inches apart, 
then that causes an issue for me. I would love to see InsoFast put another stud in right here. That would be a big help and make those electrical raceways with some type of sleeve, this, even made out of the same uh, plastic that they use for their studs, that would make this a million times easier. But where I didn't need to run it through in so fast and I could put it down walls, you know, this was nice and fast, quick and easy. This is just like any of your residential framing where boom, I have one, two, three, four sleeves of Romax running through here. There's no way I'd be making this go through that in so fast. I would have, you know, I'd have to cut out the whole strip going all the way down and then I get to one box and I got to branch off to another location. So th this kind of stuff, when your electrical is getting really intricate and we build our containers just like we would a residential home. So we have small appliance circuits in our kitchen that are all home runs all the way to the panel. And then we have a lighting circuit that's only lighting and, that, and that's a home run to the panel. And then we have a GFI outlet inside the bathroom. That's a home run because of building code. So even though these are tiny homes, we're still designing them, building them exactly the same as we would a residential home and we're still abiding by residential codes. So I think when, when you're building with that type of mindset, it was very difficult getting the electrical in all the places that we needed. But when you can get away building you know, soffits and you know, feeding as much of your electrical through things like this, that was really helpful for, for us. So once we noticed how difficult it was to get the electrical through and how big of a pain it was to mount the boxes, we started finding creative ways that we could relocate electrical or get them from point A to point B with traveling as little as possible through the InsoFast system. And if you can incorporate that, if you're using a high cube container, you could insulate the whole system, uh, the whole ceiling with this, and then build a three and five eighths inch uh, insulation, or three and five eighths uh, ceiling above or below the InsoFast, then you can run all of your electrical straight through the ceiling and only have to drop it down the walls in a couple locations. That's really going to help you out. So definitely learn from my experience. And if you're using the InsoFast system, keep as much of your electrical out of the InsoFast system and only drop it down where you absolutely need to. You can kind of see we're still in the rough phase. So we're going to be finishing a lot of it. And then once we get to the uh, all of our shiplap in and everything kind of completed then we'll have our electrician come back and since he ran all the wire he knows what circuits are for what he's labeled everything we hope this video has been informative and useful to you this is again electrical using in so fast and our 20-foot container so um, like we said it's always best to use an electrical contractor when you're running romax on a new construction build you can do a lot of that yourself. Uh, you just want to consult you, you know, local electrician if you're not, if you don't know when you should be using 12 gauge wire, when you should be using 14 gauge wire, um, you know, what needs to be a home run, what doesn't need to be a home run, then I would probably just have your electrician do the whole thing. But if you're familiar with that stuff and you can run all your wire, you could probably run it all yourself and then have your electrician come and just mount your panel and your 50 amp RV plug or however it is you're connecting your your uh, container to power. So that's uh, pretty much our two cents on it. You know, make sure to always use the proper people when it comes to electrical and uh, your mechanical for sure. And even plumbing, you know, you don't want to ruin your expensive container home you just built. So anyway, we hope this video has been useful and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe and somebody's gonna win this container as long as everyone helps us. Hit the GoFundMe below, let's help us hit that $20,000 goal. And then this thing's going away to somebody which I'm going to be sad to see it go because there's so much time and effort into here. But, uh, yep, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Continue watching. Out!